Look right there. Right here. Hello, everybody. This is emergency breaking news. So, you know, tomorrow is uh, Thursday, and I'm doing CT of the Stomach tomorrow on Facebook Live, but we have a special guest here. Tonight's the first night of our uh, speaker series at Hopkins, and we have an incredible lineup this year. But a first person is Laurel Taylor. And Laurel, why don't you tell us about yourself and what are you what are you going to speak about tonight? Fantastic. Well, Dr. Fishman, thank you. And it's a pleasure to meet you all. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Laurel Taylor. I'm the founder and CEO of FutureFuel.io. And we exist to crush student debt. So this afternoon, we're actually going to be talking about the state of student loan indebtedness in our U.S. economy and what it means from an employee perspective and the weight of student debt that we bring into the workforce and what it means from an employer perspective and how we as a community can huddle up together and offer a platform that helps and really empowers users to better manage and accelerate, accelerate the pay down of their student debt. So today we would like to announce that we are launching an exclusive beta for all of y'all who have tuned in and who will be meeting with later today. And so if you go to futurefuel.io forward slash Johns Hopkins exclusive, you will see this. Uh, it's a little hard to see here, but you will see a landing page where you can sign up to participate in ex exclusive access to our beta. So on average, we're saving users about $56,000 over the lifespan of their loan. And we're looking forward to serving y'all. Uh, anyone that signs up on the beta will reach out to you. We can kick off from there. Sounds great. So ju just um, in terms of student loans, so unfortunately, I've, I've paid my student loans back. Good I think for I, you. I think I paid it last year. I finished off finally. Congratulations. 35 years later. Thank you. 35 years. 35 years. How, how big a problem years. is this? So the average, so we're talking both, to, we, we talk to some physicians, we're talking to people who are technologists, nursing. On average, what is the average student debt these days you see? Sure. So you got to stand. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so today, so I actually want to respond to something you just shared as well, which was it took 35 years to pay down your student debt. And what we actually see on average is that it takes 17 to 20 years. So we're talking about two decades to pay down student debt. And that's for one individual and one person. So we think about the household and I'm not going to get too personal and ask if that was for your kiddos, but most of us take out loans, parents plus loans, and help our kids as co-signers. So a couple things there. We're at $1.6 trillion in total student loan debt. So that is second only to mortgages in our U.S. economy, $1.6 trillion. It's growing at $100 billion annually. And again, on average, it takes 17 to 20 years to pay down student debt. And I also want to react, as Dr. Fishman said, and shared student debt is not just for millennials. Um, actually, those who have the most student loan debt are between the ages of 30 and 49. So a bit of myth busting. It's not just for kids. It's not just for students. It's not just for millennials. We have three generations today that are really struggling with what's on average uh, $353 to $500 monthly student loan debt. Now, if that happened in medicine, if we had seven out of 10 graduates coming out with a disease or disorder that took 20 years and $500 a month, I think we would call that an epidemic. Right. And so basically the fact, I mean, we all know this, in some sense, it's kind of the obvious answer. Uh, no, none of us want to own, owe money. And no. surely, you know, it's one thing if you owe it on a house and then you're living in the house, but now you're, you're paying back something you barely remember. You get, you know, you went to this college or that college. How does it impact uh, people's lifestyles? I mean, it's, it's a, you owe a lot of money and you're paying back and the average loan rates on student loans and some of you probably know this because you've tried to do it is you can go bank you can go you can declare bankruptcy on anything except your student loans if you declare bankruptcy you still have student loans so you can't get around mm -hmm. them so you know so it must impact people's yeah. uh, just I, I know that I read uh, I heard a talk by Mark Cuban and he was saying that yeah. uh, it's very much like the housing crisis in the old days mm -hmm. people the housing crisis was that you sold people houses they couldn't afford. Yeah. And for a lot of people, they have debt they really can't afford. This sure. They'll never pay it back, or you're paying back so much of your debt, you can't move on with your life. You can't move, you can't move on your, with your life. So, you know, for me personally, the reason I started this company, uh, yeah, so I went to Texas State undergrad, undergraduate school, and I took out student loan debt, and my mom took out a parent plus loan, and it took us 
several years to pay down that student debt. Now, I want you to think about mom paying down debt. So mom's a social worker and there's only one place to put that dollar and it's either going into a nest egg in retirement or it's going to student debt. And we think about boomers and how ill-prepared boomers were for retirement. And now you fast forward and we have three generations that have an amount of student loan debt that we have never seen before in our economy. And so what it means is my lifestyle of you know living in San Francisco, I had four roommates, I'm barely making my rent. I put nothing into savings or retirement until my early 30s. And so the quality of life and the long-term financial implications it is financially devastating to be playing the game of compound interest on debt for 17 to 20 years. There's only one place to put that dollar. And so our mission is to intercept that and to enable users to understand what they have, optimize their pay down paths, accelerate their pay down through personalization, through platform, and to enable them to go beyond debt and begin to build wealth. So if I, let's, let's say I had a, I'm finished and I'm, I have $100,000 in sure. debt. The way you do things, and so I'd be paying so much dollars a month for mm -hmm. like X number of years. Sure. With the things you worked on, mm -hmm. how, how much would it save an average person if they did it? I love that question. Thank you for that question. So we have a number of different capabilities, but one of the capabilities that has really been a home run from, an, from a user experience perspective is just simply taking spare change on everyday spending. So let's say you go get your cup of coffee in the morning and it's $1.50. We're gonna take the extra 50 cents, and when you reach a goal that is personalized to you, we have an algorithm that suggests a goal, it's generally three, five, and seven, or 20, 25, and 30. When you reach that goal, we're gonna sweep your spare change to your highest interest rate student loan. That one capability saves on average $15,000 in four years off the back end of the loan. So when we released, we call it Roundup, when we released Roundup, what we learned is that it actually takes a village. Dr. Fishman may have been helping his kids with their student debt. And so what we learned was mom, dad, aunt, uncle, grandma, Judy, also want to be able to essentially find that spare change in their wallet every month. And now we have hope. Now we have an opportunity to shave three, four, five, seven, eight years off of, of the life loan because we're, 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 we're working with it in a way that feels painless, but it's having a big, a big impact. So it's been really exciting to see those numbers. And so what, so you're dealing with individuals or companies, mm. what's, your, what's the basic plan? Indeed, so thus far, a Future Fuel serves and reaches the user through the employer. However, starting the third week in October, users are able to engage and sign up directly. Now, the link that we just provided to y'all, which is exclusive, which, we, which we're going to put, I know people can see it. And well, like, fantastic. Like you, Scott, comments, and you and everybody else will put the URL up right after we finish this session. Yes, and Hugh's calling it the, the, the trillion dollar black hole indeed, right. which is, and we can talk about that. We can talk about the revenue ruling and the, the legislative momentum, but through a, an exclusive beta access, which we have never announced, it's happening right now, uh, we are enabling users to sign up for our platform directly. And so we'll post that link, it's futurefuel.io forward slash John Hopkins exclusive. And if, if you can come in, you can explore, we will aggregate your debt, we'll help you understand the debt that you have, how to optimize your pay down paths, and then we can help through things like spare change on everyday spending. And, and what's been, how well, I know you've been, um, your company is moving along very well financially and everything like that, but from the individual basis, I know some big companies, you mentioned Pfizer's one of your big clients, and Pfizer is very strict on what they do, so that's a really good thing. But so, and what's the on the individual side? Mm -hmm. To get the company on the sure. individual, how do people? How has that made? Uh, how has it been accepted? What, mm. you, what you're doing? Indeed. So we're solving. You know, we're solving a uh, we're solving a problem that has a, brings with it a tremendous amount of stress and burden and um, despair. Actually, we hear users talk about their student debt as stages of grief. It's actually quite mm -hmm. striking. And so what we see is that. The moment that the user starts to engage in our platform, and first we just aggregate the debt. So most users have four to seven different student loans in the caregiver community. It's anywhere from 25 to 52 student loans. So just being able to see and be able to understand what, are, what your interest rates are, when it's going to be over. And then we call them snackable actions. These ways of just 30, 60 second interactions with our app 
that have this disproportionate impact. So we're seeing hope and engagement. We're seeing um, we're seeing kind of a, a virality to it because it's across the household as well. So generally the user engages and then mom and dad and grandma Judy also get engaged because they want to contribute. They want to contribute as well. So actually Dr. Fishman brought up a really important point about indeed. So we just, we just heard of a, a, a user just, just shared that, that there's a, a member of his household that has $80,000 of student debt, which is not unusual on our platform. The average user has about $68,000 of student debt. Um, but what we're seeing is that you know, as the user is, is engaging, that we're enabling the user to, we're seeing a change in financial health and resiliency. So we're starting to see uh, and we're, we're excited to share more about that later this fall, but because we can, ha we have an understanding of the impact from student debt and beyond, we're starting to see changes in savings, changes in engagement in 401k plans. And part of that is just meeting the user and huddling up around that number one issue so they can, they can graduate into thinking about other things. But Dr. Fishman brought up a great point about security. So Fiserv, which was previously first data was just, uh, just merged with Fiserv as one of our largest clients. And Fiserv took us through a, a year long, what in the enterprise space is called vendor risk and information security, which means that we have been rigorously, rigorously tested in terms of our security posture. And so we, we, we take security very seriously. Uh, we do not sell user data. We are a mission purpose driven organization that exists to crush student debt and we're here to reach the 45 million Americans and we have the appropriate security posture to do that. So about 81% of our team is product dev and engineering uh, talent. That's great. And I know you went to MIT, but we can't tell everybody anybody anything more because five o'clock, one hour from now, we're going to be upstairs in the Chevy Chase conference room. That's at the Hopkins Hospital and you're more than welcome to join us there. And so I will, we will post the, the links and so you can read a lot more about it and you can contact Laurel. Because the other question I was going to ask you, we're out of time, is sure. you know, we, have, we have a lot of our people from around the world, half, yes. more than half our people around the world. So mm -hmm. Egypt, Italy. Italy. So it's interesting is, you know, I, you're focusing on the U.S. Is this, is, I would assume this is a worldwide problem for the most part? This is a worldwide problem, but unfortunately the U.S. at $1.6 trillion dwarfs any other economy. Um, the other economies and regions are that are most affected by student debt include the U.K. and Australia and Japan. Uh, but we're really focused right now on serving Americans because the size and scale of the problem is so disproportionate um, right now. Right here in our own country, but we uh, we will be expanding globally over the next year. Okay, Laurel, thanks very much. Thank we'll you. see you upstairs. We got to get ready. Have a great day. Thank thanks you. a lot. And please join our beta. Bye. Love to have you. Let me see. I did this, and now. Doo -doo 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 -doo.